I studied 300 leak code problems. Here's how. What I'm gonna go over today is my motivation for why I did 300 leak code problems, how I was able to go about doing it, was it worth it, and would I do it again, how exactly would I do it again, and finally, should you do it? First, let's talk about my motivation for doing 300 problems. Why did I? Well, part of it was honestly because it was fun. LeetCode is a great closed system where all that matters in that moment is just solving the problem at hand. And if you can solve it, congrats, you get a gold star. And if you can't, you can keep trying and trying. And if you can't solve it, you can just look at the solution and you'll know how to do it. For also other reasons, of course, I'm not just constantly solving LeetCode problems in my free time now. And some of those include obviously money, the internships at tech pay a ridiculous amount. And at the time, I wanted the social validation that you get when you have a big company on your resume. So now let's talk about the process. So I started lead coding right around the end of my freshman year of college, all the way up to around the middle of that summer. So maybe two, three months of lead coding. And at first, the questions were pretty hard for me, even the easy ones. I really didn't understand what any of the data structures and had no clue about what the algorithms were. So I took to the greatest resource, YouTube. I watched dozens and dozens of videos about how to to traverse a binary search tree. I watch videos about graphs and other data structures and algorithms. Merge sort, bubble sort, quick sort, all the different sorts, hash sets, different times and space complexities for the different types of data. But overall, this gave me a basic understanding of all of the different algorithms and data structures that I needed for interviews. And that in total was more than enough to start solving these easy problems. And for some context, during my interview preparation, I used almost exclusively lead code. I dabbled a little bit with hacker rank, but quickly stopped. Algo Expert was kind of in its infancy stage, so I hadn't really heard about it at all. One book that I have to mention is Cracking the Coding Interview. I spent a little bit of time living through some of the pages of that book as well as elements of programming interviews, but I got kind of bored of those and I stuck to lead code. And eventually it began paying off. The easy questions went from hard to medium to easy. I eventually moved on to sort of easy medium questions. Eventually I was solving medium questions. And my actual process was using the Pomodoro method for studying. And if you're not familiar with that, it's just repeating 30 minute cycles where 25 minutes of that 30 minutes, you're working hard, no distractions, and five minutes you get a short break. And what you do on that break can be whatever from checking social media to watching brief YouTube video. And throughout my interview preparation stage, I spent about five sessions in the morning, so about two and a half hours doing these Pomodoro sessions. After that, I had a quick lunch break and then two more sessions of that usually. So in total, about three and a half hours per day. And using the Pomodoro session was really amazing for my interview preparation. There were a lot of times during those 25 minute cycles where I felt really unmotivated and just wanted to stop working altogether. But I just told myself, it's only a couple more minutes until you get a small break. And I've seen other variations of the Pomodoro method. So really finding what works best for you is what I would suggest. Admittedly, I didn't solve these problems in the best way Way possible. And what I mean by that is I didn't optimize for space and time complexity. A lot of the times when I solved a question, I just took the first working solution and I ran with it. And that was part of the reason why I was able to do so many problems in such a short amount of time. So the next section of this video is about if it was worth it. Short answer, yes. If we went purely from a monetary standpoint, I put in about $130 into a LeetCode premium subscription. And by the end of this summer and including this past summer, I probably made around $60,000. So clearly financially this has paid off. But even including other aspects, such as the amount of time that I've sunk into interview preparation, I still think it's very, very worth it. The stress relief of not having to recruit anymore, as well as setting myself up for a good job opportunity after college, is worth so much more than a few hours and $130. Looking back at this time is a great reminder of what I can accomplish if I set my mind to something. So would I do it again? Yes. In a heartbeat. Did I do it in the most efficient way? Eh. So then the next question would be, how would I do it again if I had to? Well, first off, I wouldn't do 300 problems. I think that's overkill. And for the longest time, 300 problems was the most problems done that I've heard anyone doing. That is until recently. And I found out that someone I know has done around 600 problems and someone that she knows has done over a thousand problems. And yeah, that's pretty crazy considering there's only like 11, 1200 problems on lead code in general. The reason why I think doing even 300 problems is kind of overkill is because a lot of these problems are cookie cutter. Sure, each problem has their own little story and maybe formats their data a tiny bit differently. But after getting down the initial algorithms and data structures that you need to know for the basics, there isn't really much to do or much 
to learn except for practicing and practicing these algorithms until you get them down. The next thing that I change is not leaving the second that I get my first working solution. And this is something I really, really messed up on. Solving the problem is, in my opinion, much less difficult than optimizing for space and time complexity. And this is crucial because if there are two engineers that can do the exact same thing, as in both of their programs can accomplish the same thing, but the first engineer's code takes five minutes to run and the second engineer's code takes five seconds to run, there's a very clear winner among these two engineers, even though their code can do the same thing. One more thing is that it's very important to talk aloud as you're solving the questions. I didn't do this nearly as much as I should. And the reason why is because during your interview, you're gonna have to be explaining your thought process as you code. So getting used to that multitasking of writing your code and being able to explain it is very important. And if you go in your first interview, not knowing how to explain your code as you're writing it, you're gonna have a really tough time. And lastly, as far as resources go, I really don't think it matters too much. As I said, for my resources, I watched a bunch of random YouTube videos and I read a couple books very briefly. But in my opinion, these concepts of the algorithms and the data structures that you need aren't too difficult. And the more important thing is getting in the reps of writing them over and over again and optimizing them. So the last thing I want to talk about is if you should do it. And while I can't answer it for you, I think it's a pretty simple question. And you basically just have to ask yourself how much you really enjoy coding. Yes, the money and the prestige that comes with these top level jobs can be really attractive. But I believe enjoying the work that you do is just as important, if not more important. Because after all, if you do end up being a full-time programmer, you're going to be spending 40 hours a week, 50 weeks in a year doing programming. So you'd probably want to enjoy it. So yeah, that was my process for how I did 300 Lico problems. If I would do it again, if it was worth it, and if I could, how I would do it all over again. Let me know your feedback in the comments and thank you so much for watching.